What's going on guys, Bunks here and today I'm back with another No Man's Sky beginner guide video for you and today I'll be showing you 8 ways you can make nanites and end up with tens of thousands of nanites early on in the game and these are all really easy to do. Especially early on we don't have much equipment or resources. I'll start with the real quick ways to get some nanites but later tips will get you many many more nanites so make sure you stick around for all of them and without further ado let's go ahead and get stuck in. So first up I'm going to be talking about a couple of ways you can get yourself a bunch of nanites whilst you're on board the space station. And the first of those is from these little blue and orange cubes that you'll see laying around on the tables. Now if you pick these up you could get yourself a small handful of nanites, say 15 or so. Don't worry later in the videos you'll be getting far more than this. So pick up every single one you see. Now they don't always give you nanites and sometimes instead they'll be giving you navigational data which is still viable because you can use these to buy maps and cartographer and more specifically maps to abandoned buildings and more on that in just a few minutes. And secondly you can see little boxes on the wall in the side rooms of the space station and these are going to give you slightly more nanites. Again nothing special but still grab them nonetheless. And finally, the third way to get nanites on the space station is by undertaking missions. If you head on over to the alien who can give you a variety of missions, you will notice that they will give you various rewards, and sometimes this can be a few hundred nanites, so definitely worth checking these missions out to see if you can get yourself some nanites. The missions are all fairly straightforward as well, so you shouldn't have a problem getting them. So next up, let's talk about your discoveries. So when you scan anything on a planet, be it creatures, plants, rocks and so on, you can then head on over to your discoveries tab and upload these discoveries for a tasty nanite profit. Each discovery you upload will get you a small amount of nanites and if you scan as much as you can on as many plant planets as you can early on, you're going to make yourself thousands of nanites from doing this. So it's definitely worth spending say an hour just visiting all these planets in a couple of systems and uploading everything you come across. And as a side note, you're also going to be earning many units as you scan everything, so double winning. And if you scan every single creature on a planet, you are able to get a bonus of up to possibly 2,500 nanites per planet. So the more creatures on a planet, the higher the bonus. And in the discoveries tab, you can actually see some clues as to where to find the remaining creatures that you haven't yet scanned. For example, they could be daytime only flying creatures, underwater creatures, underground only creatures and so on. It's definitely worth finding and scanning all of them for that tasty nanite bonus. Moving on, you will notice on the vast majority of planets that you can see some damaged machinery on the ground. And now this can give you a couple of ways to get some nanites. Firstly, if you walk up to damaged machinery and repair it, you're going to be rewarded with one of three things. The most likely of these is nanites, only a relatively small amount, around 30 or so. But you could also get Starship Launch Fuel, and more importantly, the third thing you could get is an upgrade module. Now, if you do get one of those and you don't feel the need to use that upgrade module, you can then sell it on board the space station for a decent amount of nanites, depending on what class upgrade it is. If it's an S class, you're going to get yourself a few hundred nanites in one go. Finally, with damaged machinery, there will always be some buried technology nearby which you can pick up and that's going to give you up to 4 salvage data and this can be converted into nanites very easily and it's very easy to make a few hundred nanites from even say 20 or so salvage data and I'll tell you how to do that in just a minute. Now then, let's talk about Iteration Ares and Iteration Helios who can be found on board the Anomaly. So you know how I mentioned about scanning and uploading your discoveries for nanites? Well, that's not the only way you can get nanites from scanning creatures and plants. If you've scanned a load of them, then make your way up to the Anomaly and go over to our good friend Iteration Helios, who is the one with the weird tree type head. You can pass over your discoveries to them and in return, you'll be getting a decent chunk of nanites. Now it does depend on the day as Helios is after different things each time, but you can walk away with a few hundred nanites each day depending on how many new discoveries you have to pass over to them, so be sure to visit Iteration Helios each day after you've scanned lots of things. Now Iteration Ares will also give you nanites in return for things, but they're going to give you them based on your journey milestones, and early on in the game you'll be getting a lot of journey milestones. These can be acquired through many aspects of the game, such as learning new words, meeting new aliens, gathering a certain amount of units, exploring space, and so on. Of course, the more journey milestones you've achieved, the more nanites you're going to get from Iteration Ares, so whenever you've gathered a few milestones, be sure to pop on up to Anomaly for a few hundred nanites in return. Just a quick one, whilst you're here folks, it'd be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. So moving on to those annoying sentinels, now these aren't as easy to destroy as they used to be so I would recommend buying some multi-tool upgrades before taking a bunch of them on, but destroying these pesky buggers will net you quite a lot of nanites depending on how many you destroy. The more sentinels you destroy, the more nanites you'll get. 
obviously. And of course, the more difficult a sentinel destroyed, the more nanites you're going to get as well. So for example, destroying a sentinel walker could net you around 90 nanites apiece, and a sentinel drone would net you only just 10 nanites apiece, but you'll definitely destroy more sentinel drones than walkers. I'd say spend an hour sentinel hunting and you'll have hundreds if not a few thousand nanites to show for it. Bonus points if you get a mission from the space station which wants you to destroy sentinels as well because then you get double rewards. Final note on destroying sentinels, you are going to end up with a lot of pugnium from them and you can turn that into nanites as well but more on that in just a moment. Next up I'm going to be talking about abandoned buildings. Now abandoned buildings can be found on the vast majority of planets throughout No Man's Sky and there are a couple of ways you can make nanites here. The first way is by strolling on inside and you should be greeted with a terminal which needs some junk removing from it before it'll work again. You can keep this material or discard it really is up to you, but the terminal will then give you a, long, a log from a random and probably long dead traveller and once the log is finished you're going to be rewarded with some nanites. There may also be nanites on the wall so look out for those as well. But more importantly, abandoned buildings are usually surrounded by roughly 14 to 20 whispering eggs and you can spot these as big red warning signs when looking through your analysis visor. Now this is where a much larger amount of nanites can be made from abandoned buildings. If there were say 20 whispering eggs and you managed to grab all of the larval cores from within them whilst avoiding those biological horrors, that's 1000 nanites right there. Now to turn those larval cores into nanites brings me on to my next tip. And that next tip involves turning a bunch of resources into nanites via the refiner. Now there are a lot of resources you can actually refine into nanites, some of which I've previously mentioned in this video, and some will refine into more nanites than others. I'll also mention a couple of resources that aren't really worth refining into nanites, and the main one of that is platinum. It takes 35 units of platinum to refine into just one nanite, so it is actually better off to sell that platinum on the space station for more money. Especially early on in the game if you want to get rid of it and free up some inventory space. Anyway, the resources that are best for refining into nanites, and in no particular order, are Runaway Mold, which isn't that common, but if you come across a bunch of curious deposits, aka Runaway Mold Balls, and you mine these, you'll end up with probably a couple thousand units of it, and when stuck into a refiner, 5 units of Runaway Molds will give you 1 nanite, so having say 3000 units of Runaway Mold, that's going to net you 600 nanites. Not bad, right? Next up, as previously mentioned, you can refine larval cores into nanites. Now these have one of the best ratios into nanites when refining. If you gathered as many as you can when you were at those abandoned buildings earlier, you can refine one larval core into a whopping 50 nanites. So even if you had just 5 larval cores, that's 250 nanites straight off the bat, and you can usually get double that at any abandoned building, so get farming those larval cores. Just watch out for those damn pesky biological horrors. So as I mentioned earlier, destroying those pesky sentinels are going to get you plenty of pugnium, and if you manage to gather a couple thousand units of it, you can refine this into nanites at a ratio of 25 pugnium to 1 nanite. Now that's not a great ratio I know, but you'll easily be able to gather a couple of thousand units of pugnium in no time at all to refine into a healthy amount of nanites. And again, as I mentioned previously, salvage data can be refined into nanites as well, and this is at a better ratio, so one salvage data is going to refine into 15 nanites, and because salvage data is so widely available in No Man's Sky, you can easily rack up 100 units of that to turn into 1,500 units of nanites in no time at all. Simples. Tainted Metal is the final one I'm going to talk about here, and you can get this from Derelict Freighters in a healthy amount, and Tainted Metal we refine into 2 nanites apiece, so it's a half decent ratio, and you can easily get a few hundred units from it from any Derelict Freighter, so there's almost 500 nanites alone. Just be careful of those damn pesky horrors on board the Derelict Freighters. Finally, let's talk about ships, and more specifically, crashed ships. There are a few ways to come across these, and I've created a video previously showing you the fastest ways to do so, but the quick version of it is, buy some distress beacon maps from the cartographer on board any space station, and some of the time these are going to indicate an unoccupied crashed ship, which then you can claim for yourself. For free, of course. Now, the type of crashed ship you're going to get is totally random, and sometimes you can get lucky and grab one worth tens of millions, so all you need to do is fix it up, take it to the space station and then sell it for scrap and voila, millions of scrap to sell at the trade terminal and more importantly for this video you're going to get loads of upgrade modules to sell for hundreds of nanites apiece. And there is a way to keep scrapping and selling ships which will lead to an unlimited amount of units and nanites altogether. I have previously created a video on how to do this so check that out, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below for you.
And there you have it folks, there are 8 ways you're able to make yourself thousands of nanites early on in No Man's Sky. I hope you found this video useful and if you did it would be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. I will be doing more beginner guides like this in the future along with amazing locations, update rumours, glitches and much more so you don't want to miss out on those right? And as always thank you for watching and catch you on the flip side.